Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's overview and review, we're going to take a look at 8th Air Force, a solitaire war game designed by Bob Faneth, published by Fortress Games. I believe this is his first release um, with Fortress Games. I do want to thank Bob for providing me this review copy. Um, so far, I have done a recon on unboxing, unbagging, it does come in a bag. Um, I did a tutorial, uh, played through the first two turns video, you can watch that. Um, and I'm going to do my overview and review here. We're going to follow the normal format for my overviews and reviews. So this is the introduction. I'll do an overview of the game itself, not super in-depth because I do have the tutorial where I go really in-depth in the game. Um, and then I'll have my pros and cons, and then I'll wrap up with my final thoughts. So let's get to it. You will be playing the 8th Air Force. The Luftwaffe will be controlled by the AI system. Over the course of the game, you will be constructing and running bombing missions into occupied Europe. You will have two main targets. You will have the heavy industries that are primarily um, in Germany in this core area here you can see on the map. So those are going to be things like aircraft factories, oil industry, and then heavy industry factories. You'll also have bombing campaigns that come and go <clears throat> Excuse me, as the game goes on, such as bombing U-boat pens, um, supporting the Normandy landings, bombing railroads, river crossings, V-1 sites, etc. Um, as the game goes on, you will gain additional forces. Um, how it works is you're going to start off in January of 1943. The game, if you survive, goes all the way till April of 45. At the beginning, you're not going to have a whole lot of forces. Um, it's just that was the reality of it. It's going to have to be very selective with your targets. As the game goes on, you are going to get more bombers. You're going to get better fighters. The Germans are also going to build up their air defenses as they are starting to be bombed at night by the British during the day by the Americans. Um, the British night bombing is abstracted with a single die roll. The focus is on the 8th Air Force on the daylight bombing campaign. Um, the way the game works is that the Germans at start are building up victory points. So it's a little bit of a twist in most games, right? Usually you accrue victory points to win. In this game, the Germans are accruing victory points. Any victory points you earn are actually subtracted from theirs. You can see the track up here. It starts at zero. And as the game starts, the Germans will be accruing more than you, far more. So it's gonna be going up and up and up. If it ever reaches 140, you're gonna lose the game automatically. So you need to go ahead and make sure that they don't gain too much. At some point, the scales will tip. That balance will change where you have more forces, you have more bombers, you have more fighters, and you can bomb targets at will as opposed to being more selective on your targets. The actual bombing mechanism, fairly simple. You're going to have groups and squadrons. Here you can see these are groups up here, B-17. So he's a heavy bomber. You have the P-51 Mustang. That is also, these are both groups. And then you have squadrons. Here you can see, obviously, a bomber silhouette on this one, fighter silhouettes on this one. These would end up being stacked with the groups. So the squadrons go with the groups to increase their strength. So as your forces are being built, sent to Europe, you're gaining them each turn, you're going to start off often with maybe just a group, a group and a squadron. As time goes by, you'll get more and more squadrons attached, raising the combat factors of your units. You'll be met by the exact same deal with the Germans. They'll have different fighters, BF-109, Focke-Wulf-190, and eventually <clears throat> jet fighters uh, to battle you over the skies. Um, you'll run your missions. You will assemble your force. There's going to be some air-to-air -air combat. Your bombers are going to face anti-aircraft fire. You can see AA symbols and, uh, and notations on the map here. So depending on where you are, these core areas, and as you get deeper in Germany, you're going to face increasingly harder levels of defenses. You'll start off focusing on bombing campaigns, sort of the, you know, the sub pens, railroads, things like that. But eventually, you're going to have to go into Germany, you're going to have to bomb those heavy industries, and you are going to take losses. Like I said, the game goes till uh, April 45, um, unless you reach 140 victory points, or I should say the Germans do, in which case you lose. So 
I think this is a pretty good overview for a more in-depth one and to see the game in action, check out my tutorial video. Otherwise, let's get on to my pros and cons and wrap up with final thoughts. Okay, pros and cons. As usual, we'll start with my cons, you know, the things I didn't like or maybe I thought could be improved. Then I'll tell you my pros. So first off, the overall graphical presentation. There's a lot going on on the board and it kind of looks like it. It doesn't look intuitive. It doesn't really flow super well. You don't look at it and go, oh yeah, this makes sense. It, when you first look at it, it's like, whoa, what's what's going on here? Um, the counter themselves, the counters, they're, they're serviceable. You know, you can see the see the silhouette. You can see the name. They're very easy to read, etc. But they're kind of plain. Um, you know, just a black silhouette, some text on here, and shaded blue for the Americans. Shade of blue, we have red, red text just to differentiate the B24s from the B17s. So there's no actual gameplay. And then green for the Germans. Um, it it kind of has the look of a playtest copy, just to be perfectly honest. Um, if this game ends up produced in a, another edition, I know there was kind of a second edition. Um, first was kickstarted, then there was kind of a second edition created. If there was a third edition or just like a really final one, I would like to see a more professional game board. Um, more professional game board and then more professional counters. Just because, like I said, it, it kind of has a little bit of a feel of a playtest copy, at least when you first look at it, right? When you see it all set up. Second, the rule book. It's good, not perfect. Um, the rules, while not complicated overall, are confusing when you first start learning the game. So... I covered it real quick, but when it comes to the aircraft and then, you know, these counters that go underneath it, so you have groups are the actual aircraft and these are squadrons. Well, I don't, maybe it seems simple when I say it and maybe I just have a problem with it and maybe it is actually simple and it's just my problem. I don't know for sure, but I've kind of struggled a little bit really learning it because um, there's a lot of rules that impact the groups or squadrons or both, and it can be a little difficult to grok at first, just to have kind of that flow, that smooth flow of, you know, grab a group, grab a squadron, the squadron takes damage, the squadron does this, the, you know, you eliminate a squadron, not a group, you eliminate a group first, or whatever the case may be, it sometimes can be like, wait, which one's which again? And in the heat of the moment, when you're getting reinforcements, when you're playing out battles, etc., it can get a little confusing. Um, the rulebook could just be a little better in that aspect. The nice thing, though, is the designer is super active on BoardGameGeek. So whenever there's a question someone has, Bob, he responds, I mean, within the day, if not the hour. So kudos to him. Great level support. Really appreciate that. Um, finally, the game length. So the game is made up of approximately 28 turns. Again, unless it ends earlier because you don't meet the VP threshold. Um... Obviously, everyone's going to play the game at different speeds, depending on their familiarity with the rules. But considering all the choices you have to make each turn with your bombing missions, managing both sides of the air forces, each turn's going to be 10 to 20 minutes. Beginning turns are easier, although obviously if it's your first time playing, it will be slower because you're learning the game. But say you're ex even moderate experience. You played through once, I mean, which takes a long time. So let's do the math here, give or take. Um, 10 to 20 minutes a turn, and that's from my personal experience playing the game. Again, some people are going to be faster, but I, I'm sure some people will be even slower. That means a complete game with 28 turns, you know, 10 to 20 minutes each, is 3 to 9 hours. Um, I believe I just saw a playthrough posted online recently, video playthrough, and I think it took him something like 5 to 6 hours to play through. That's probably comparable to what it takes me. Um, this isn't a game to complete in a short afternoon. Now, now, so to some people, five hours maybe doesn't sound like a lot. And I'm not saying it's, you know, this is not a multi-day, multi-week project per se. Although for me, generally, I don't sit and play for five hours. I'll play for a little while. Which, that is a nice thing, though. The way the design works, where every mission and action is completed, you know, like during a turn. Um, you, go, you go month to month, month turns. Um, you can play as many turns as you want. And really, as long as you have the space to keep the game set up, it can just sit because you're not going to be in the middle of anything, right? You're going to get your forces. You're going to complete your bombing missions. Everything's going to happen. And then at the end of the turn, you're going to move, you know, or move the turn counter down to the next month. 
and it starts at the beginning of the sequence of play. There's nothing left over to resolve, nothing like that. So you can leave the game. That's that's a really nice thing. So some of these longer games struggle with if like you really can't leave in the middle or else you get confused. This one, that's not really a problem, fortunately. So, all right, those are my cons. Let's jump into the pros because there's definitely a number of them. Um, opponent quality is decent for a first release from, you know, a new studio. The counters are actually thick. You know, there's nice thick counter, nice heavy, um, feel good. Um, the map is cardstock. I do have it under a plexi right now, um, but it is a cardstock. If you lay it flat, if you kind of backfold the creases a little bit, it lays fairly flat. Um, just for my purposes when I'm playing, I generally, if it's not mounted, I'm probably going to put it under plexi. But everyone's different, and some people will play paper or or cardstock, which this is a cardstock map. Um, they'll play that without plexi, so that's nice. Um, and then the player aids, they're like, they're not even like a paper or maybe they are paper. They're almost like a big card quality. They're really, really nice though. I like them. Um, game itself, once you're familiar with the rules and how to read the player aids, turns will speed up significantly and you'll be flying through them, pun intended. Uh, that allows you to spend less time reading the rule book or worrying about game mechanics and more time playing. In my opinion, that's the sign of a good design. You know, you have a good design here regardless of maybe some things you look at and go, well, it doesn't look super refined, doesn't look super slick. Okay, you know, maybe there wasn't a professional graphics design person involved. But the game design, right, and that's the most important thing, it's not the only thing, but is the most important thing, is really nice. Um, there's a variety of aircraft. I do like that. So fighters and bombers, and they change over time. So you start off with like P-38s, you know, some P-47s, eventually you're going to get P-51s, you know, for fighters. Um, you start off with, you know, be just a couple B-17s. You start getting some medium bombers to assist you along with more B-17s and B-24 heavy bombers. The Germans, they're going to get more Focke-Wulf 190s over time and eventually jet fighters. It's just cool to see that, right? It's realistic and it's nice to see that in a game as the forces change because not only are forces given to you as like reinforcements and manufactured, etc., some are taken away. So there are forces that are removed each turn, or not every turn, but sometimes, right? So you will have those aircraft that P-38s were used for a little while, and then they kind of weren't used as much. They were pulled back, right? I like that. It's a, it's a historically accurate. Um, and speaking of history, this game breathes it. Um, from the different aircraft, to the changing bombing target priorities, to the quotes sprinkled throughout the rulebook. You'll kind of really feel like you're commanding the 8th Air Force, with its ever move, ever moving goalposts, um, bomb the U-boat pens. Now bomb railroads. Now bomb heavy industry. There's just a lot of variety and flavor, right? I like that. I like that it's not a, hey, it's the exact same from turn one to turn twenty eight. Because let's be honest, that's a lot of turns. If you make it through the whole game, that's a lot of turns. If every turn was the exact same, oh boy, that would be tedious. Fortunately, it's not. Things change. Your aircraft change. The German aircraft change. The targets change. Yes, heavy industry are always there, but obviously that's kind of the core, right? Heavy industry is something that didn't change. That was there until, you know, the 8th Air Force began bombing it and reducing it, and it gets rebuilt every turn, partially rebuilt by the Germans, but you're going to be coming back and you're going to be bombing and bombing, and as long as you survive long enough, eventually you're going to bomb them into submission, so... Those are my uh, pros, so we wrap those up. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the final thoughts. All right, my final thoughts, and I kind of mentioned this um, previously in my last pro there, but this is a game that plays different every turn. Um, at the start, you know, you have limited resources, and you're just watching the Germans accrue victory points. It starts at zero, but it goes up and up. Right here, it's at 85. Like, it's, you know, it's getting up there. It's more than halfway to where I will lose. And it says, you lose, so you can keep in mind. You won't forget, trust me. Um, but as the game goes on, you become stronger. And you can finally push back into the heavily defended core areas of Germany itself. I love that feeling. I love that feeling of the game changing over time, as it historically did, right? As the bombing campaign did. We were went over there, you know, speaking from an American perspective, right? The bombing campaign began, um, and it just... You know, maybe they weren't ready. Maybe they didn't have the resources. Maybe it was time to start no matter what. The point was, I know when we, we think, I think most Americans, um, at least I'll speak for myself, think of, you know, the daylight strategic bombing campaign. We think of just hundreds of bombers flying over Germany, dropping their bombs, and just, 
dominating the skies, right? Fighter escorts, not a problem. It's war. People are, things are bad. Things are happening. But the campaign, you know, hey, the industrial might, right? No problems there. In reality, you had to start from somewhere. You had to start from, from scratch. And this game simulates that very well, beginning with a limited amount of forces, limited targets, thankfully, you know, limited requirements. But as time goes by, you got to do more and more. You're going to get more. We're going to have to do more as well. So final thought, this game, 8th Air Force, recommended if you're able to look past the graphical shortcomings. Um, you know, that is something to be aware of. I think you kind of see it. I, I would, you know, never look at this and say, what an attractive game. And, and you know, looking at a game and being attracted to it, like being able to play it, look at it and enjoy it is, is important, right? It's not all about design. You need to be able to look at something and be like, yeah, this looks good. I would say it's functional, not much beyond that. But that's okay. You know, the designer was able to take something to allies. We're never going to lose that. And I'm talking specifically about the long-term strategic bombing campaign. And turn it into a really tense game. So, thumbs up for me. Definitely recommended. If you like the theme, you like solitaire war games, something you want to look to get into. If you don't mind, you know, it's probably going to take you a bit to learn the rules to get started. They're just, just the way they are. Um, and then the game length. If you cannot leave this game set up somewhere, expect you're going to have to play set up, play through, tear down, you know, five, six, six hours. I mean, just expect that. Um, if it's, if you can leave something set up, if you can leave it set up like I can, perfect game for that. The length isn't even really a problem because you'll play it when, when and you can. So hope you guys enjoyed this overview and review. Hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the game. Um, once again, thank you to Bob and thank you to you guys for watching, subscribing, giving thumbs up and making comments. So Love to see any, see any comments about this game. What do you think of it? Um, have you played it yet? Are you going to, you're going to pick it up? Um, if it interests you, I hope you do. Um, this definitely is one that I'd be interested to see continue to develop. I, I'm interested in seeing what Bob does in the future with this design and other designs he may have. So, which hopefully solitaire, right guys? So, all right. Until next time, everyone. Later.